But in a few hours time, a hundred thousand people will stand in this empty arena between the sea and the Mersey and listen to a man who has come back to his roots. And you know, Liverpool people have always had a lot of talent. There's always been a lot of comedians, musicians, uh, actors, etc. come out of here. So hopefully this school will uh, tap that kind of talent, you know, rather than the academic thing. See my old mate Donny. Right, Don? Yeah, I went to school with him. The Liverpool School for the Performing Arts is not the only charity that will benefit from the concert. There is also the Kids in Need and Distress, the Netherly Trust, the Merseyside Play Action Group, the children of Liverpool. Best thing is audiences. As you make your records and you, you write them and you sing them and you, you mix the records kind of in private. And then you try them out on people. And it's, it's really only then when you're in front of an audience that you see if you've done it right or not. Some of the shows we've been doing, you know, you really get a feeling like you've been doing something right. Because otherwise, it's just you're listening to critics, and they're always picking your part, even if you've got it right. And even if it's Sergeant Pepper, you know, the critics slammed it. Oh, you know, load of rubbish. So it is nice to get a genuine opinion. They've got no axe to grind. They're not looking after their own image. They're not trying to further their own career. They're just people who've come to a show, and they either like you or they walk out. So I'm with them. I'm not with the critics. I'm with the audience, you know. So they've since told me there's a couple of hot reviews that I should read, but I won't do it. I'm planning to read them all at the end of the tour. Sit down, my slippers on, get the telly on, get the sounds on, you know, have a, a drink, and I'll read some of the better reviews. I'll, I'll still get hung up, I know. Well, this being John's 50th year, he would have been 50, I wanted to do something coming out on tour, you know, I wanted to recognize the fact. So much gets said about me, John, you know, and we had Barneys, we had plenty of Barneys. 
So I like the idea of just putting a bit of that to rest and doing something that was real, which was like playing a small tribute to him, you know. So I just thought, well, what are, what are a few songs of John's that I like and that I think are really John? And the first three that came to mind were Strawberry Fields, which is very John. And it reminds me of when we recorded it and everything. And all of that was very John. It was very typical of him. A lot of good memories of that. And then Help, which I wrote with John, but he takes the lead vocal. So I'd never actually sung the lead vocal. So that was nice. It's a nice song to do. And the good words. And then Give Peace a Chance it had to be there because to me that's sort of one of John's big statements, really, in the world. And I always say to people, anybody who's sort of trying to say, well, you know, he's just a singer like John. I mean, I'm not trying to uh, make a saint out of him or anything, but in his defense, you know, I would say, yeah, well, he may have just been a singer, but the Vietnam War was brought to a close by over a million people singing that song at the White House in Washington. And, you know, when you see a million or so people, more than a million people, young people singing that, that's pretty powerful, isn't it? And it's happened every time we've done it. They, they naturally join in. And to me, it reaffirms the thing that we sometimes forget these days, particularly in the 80s, that, you know, we really do want peace. Liverpool was incredible because, you know, they're my people. This, these are, these are, some of them are people I grew up with. Well, half of them are my family. So it's very special, you know, to go home. And there we were on a beautiful evening in the summer on the banks of the Mersey with these people buzzing away. That was a very special memory for me. And I say the moment when they, they wouldn't stop singing Give Peace a Chance was, was very special. You don't get that often. That was a great buzz. This is just a little tribute to someone we love dearly. Two, three.
John is my second favourite. I like John better. I can't stand Ringo at this point. You don't like Ringo's drumming? Looks like he's playing an E to me. Yeah. An E? Could be an E. Maybe an E minor, yeah, I've seen E. Yeah. I think the Beatles like the, uh, I can't see Ringo here. Ringo. and it's 3 o'clock in the morning and it's already starting to get light outside if you can believe that. And um, earlier today... Dabba do. Some of the cool graffiti out here. Classical instruments of the old. On the left. Painted oh, wait, because. Wait, wait. Yeah, I'll let you out actually. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit awkward to find corner to stop on. This is where I lost my tape went out last time. The little red button? Yeah, you got it. Okay. Pretty late. We're doing video of Jimmy doing video. Yeah, we are. Of Eric. On Penny Lee. Okay. Now, what do you want? You want me to help? 
wait yes. till the hall for two mm. hours. I didn't know this is cold as mm. I've ever been in my life. Really? Here it is. This mm. is what I'm talking about. Now, Penny, I'll Hold stop the, the other side of the junction. But Penny Lane finishes here, and we've got Penny Lane Records, Penny Lane Wine Bar. And then the lane is finished. But all the things that are mentioned in the song are beyond the junction. Yes, yeah, Sergeant Pepper's just ahead right here. That used to be the bus shelter, the shelter in the middle of the roundabout. Uh, I'll, I'll stop and you can get on. Hornby Housing Group on the left used to be a bank. Penny Lane Sage Surgery on the left here. When you came last year, that was a Barclays bank. Yeah, sure was. Mm. But we like to think they wrote about the TSB, the Trustee Savings Bank, over on the far right-hand corner. The fire station is about a mile away, but the firemen would come to the junction. They would go to the barber shop, which is uh, just beyond the shop with the canopy. Uh, still showing, in fact, I'll park by that one. Uh, the barber showing photographs of the Beatles today. Now, until they were six years old, John and George lived in the area just ahead of us. And then they moved out way out to the right. Where Great. I wonder if they got any special Beatles stuff over there. Yes, ma'am. I wish we could do a walking tour. I do too. Couldn't hardly walk. Well, we can probably still do it. Oh. On the, uh, used to live down the corner, John Lennon, didn't he? Mm-hmm. He did. Oh, he was telling me that John lived around the corner. Is there any stuff in there? Oh, let's go check it out. Amazing. Penny Lane Records, and they don't have any Beatles. Life's like that mate you died a few years ago. You sell a lot if you would, if you would put some in here. It's already rolling. It's already rolling. It's county. Yeah, how do you know? <laughs> That's fine. Now, until they were six years old, John Lennon, Lennon and George Harrison lived in the area up to the left-hand side. And then they moved out way ahead of us, where Paul McCartney also lived. And all three of them, not Ringo, would come through this junction very, very regularly, changing buses, waiting for buses, going to the church, the shops, the school, the barbers. All they did was write about the area they knew. So you know what to do when you get home. <laughs> Just sit down and write a song about the street where you live. Yeah. Make your fortune. You'll put Derek and I on commission, won't you? Yeah. Just ahead of you is a Bernardo store, which used to be a photographer's, Albert Marion's. Now, he took the very first professional photographs of the Beatles, which are worth a lot of money now. A few years later, he took my wedding photographs, but uh, they haven't appreciated in monetary value so much. They're sitting in the drawer. I know what you mean. That was a big Victorian house in those days. Modern units now. Uh, Yoko came here in January '84. She's given the. She gave the home a lot of money and the children's parents. That's me. Now, it's kind of neat having all those books with all these pictures and everything in it. Because then when you see it in real life, you think, oh, I've seen pictures of this before. I'm sure you understand, Hillary. What? Just... Strawberry Fields forever. Harry. Uh, Woo! 
the mall. Look at the tune. I always feel at first there was a lot of jealousy between them. Uh, I don't see why they work so well together. Yes, well, how could it be? But there was there was also jealousy at first. Which one is it? It's number twenty. We'll have to do some video swapping. I'll get your videos and you get mine. I've got everything. All our, all our wraps. So how long did Paul live here he then? He came here from, in 1955. It was, he was born in the north end of the city at Walton Hospital, 15th of June, 42. Uh, first two homes were near Liverpool. Uh, you see those two, um, Sudbury and... Um, and then you've seen the two houses, haven't you, Jane? Sorry. Here on the left is Mendips 251 Mendip Avenue. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. John's house. How long did he live there? Uh, from just after the war, um, from when he was about six, right, he, he went to Gambia Terrace by the cathedral when he was a student at the art college, but he came back here um, when he married Cynthia and they had Julian. No, Paul on the south coast, um, along, the, along the coast from where Paul was. It's further west, um, quite a bit further west. Um, the beef. Uh, current home, the home he has over there, um, Hesbell Hospital. It's been pulled down now, uh, but um, that's where he he got in the ward band. He was born in Madryn Street, which we'll we'll drive down in a moment. At the age of six, he moved to Admiral Grove here on the left, and he lived in the house that's painted white with the light upstairs. Number 10. This is what we said, Paul, a two up, two down house. Two rooms really? downstairs, two rooms upstairs, outside to it. Yes. Imagine the fans crowding around here when the Beatles were famous. It was the fans that made Ringo's mother and stepfather move from here because they got no privacy. The fans were sitting on the back wall and they went to the outside to it. The pub on the left is on the cover of Ringo's solo record, Sentimental Year. The 4th, 7th of July, 1940. And down here he lived in, was born and lived in a three up, three down house. But his father left home when Ringo was three. Uh, a couple of years later, his mother actually exchanged houses with a friend. The friend had a smaller house, but a bigger family. So it suited them both. Now, sadly, his house is all boarded up. It's a nice feature on this lady's house. Can I point to your house, my dear? With you, with the um, it says it actually says Beatles in the pointing, in the cement work between the bricks. You see the oh, lower window. Sake. Yes. Oh, Have you got oh, above the lower? Yeah. Above the lower window, Jim. There's a, a painted oh, yeah, bricks. Yeah, yeah. Then two oh, levels, yeah. and then in the next two levels of bricks, it says Beatles. Yes. He's a good American supporter with his stars and stripes on there. So that's one of the places he lived? No, no. Ringo lived here, was okay. born and lived at number nine. This house, number ten, is where uh, his mother's friend, um, Mrs. Elsa McGuire, lived. sorry, Mrs. McGuire, she was Elsa. Ringo would love my love. 
back up, Boogaloo. <laughs> and the mothers were friends here. The That's daughter exciting. of number 10 used to look after them when he was a youngster. And she, in fact, the daughter, in fact, was a beautiful girl at the same time. One of those groups copying records was the Quarrymen. This is Arnold Grove. It's where George was born and lived until he was six at number 12, which is just down here. Um, very like Ringo's. A lot more crowded, of course, because uh, George, the youngest of four children. But again, a two up, two down house. Uh, George's father went to sea, then he became a bus conductor and bus driver. And he and um, Louise, the mother, gave George a lot of things. The Royal Borough of Liverpool. I was born and bred there, Liverpool that is, in fact I lived there most of my life. It's a city of ships, streets, pubs, people, relatives, in fact this old pub overlooks the water like most of my relatives in it. Jerry Marsden's here. Jerry, yeah. Who? 
clear disguise on it. Oh, I'm just walking around. Aren't I? <laughs> We're just going to Everybody gonna 
Hurts. Even your congestion hurts. And you've got the whole day ahead of you. Think fast. Introducing new Tylenol Cold Rapid Release Gels. They relieve even your most painful cold symptoms fast. New Tylenol Cold Rapid Release Gels. The woman on the right is using Cascade 2 and Bonsoir à Paris. Bonsoir la belle France. Bienvenue à Olympia. We're gonna have some fun tonight. 